Section 13.3 is radian measure. I can use radian measures for angles, and I can find the length of the arc of the circle. Big ideas. An angle with a full circle rotation measures 2 pi radians. So a full circle is 2 pi radians, um, just like it's 360 degrees. An angle with a semicircle rotation measures pi radians. So what they're talking about, guys, is just this half circle is a pi radians. The second half is a pi, which means our full circle is 2 pi. To convert degrees to radians, uh, we multiply by pi radians divided by three uh, by 180. And that comes from 2 pi radians being a full circle and 360 degrees being a full circle. So you can use this if you want instead of the simplified version if that's easier for you to remember. Okay. To convert radians to degree, degrees, we multiply by 180 divided by pi radians. Again, you could use the 360 over 2 pi radians if you wanted to. Um, and don't put too much time into trying to panic about, like, oh goodness, I'm going to forget which ones to use when. The idea here is that we just convert it using um, unit analysis and unit conversion like we do in, have been doing for a long time. So um, to get rid of degrees, we have to have them cancel. To get rid of radians, we have to have them cancel. So one on the top, one on the bottom. For a circle of radius r and a central angle of measure theta in radians, the length of the intercepted arc is s equals r times theta. So our arc length, which is what s is, I'm not really sure why, but we just go with it, is our radius times theta. A central angle of a circle is an angle with a vertex at the center of a circle. An inner uh, septed arc is the portion of the circle with endpoints on the sides of the central angle and remaining points within the interior of the angle. A radian is the measure of a central angle that intercepts an arc with length equal to the radius of the circle. Take note, radians and degrees on page 844. D degrees over 180 equals R radians over pi radians. Okay. Um, and that helps us convert between degrees and radians. They're proportions, guys. So as long as we're comparing half circles or full circles, um, we can compare the parts. So what is the degree measure of an angle of negative 3 pi over 4 radians? Guys, uh, in radians, a lot of times we have uh, pi included in their measure. So don't be surprised about that. So we have radians. And we want to know what is the degree. So degree has to go on top, radians on the bottom. And again, we can either do a half circle of pi and 180 degrees or a full circle of 2 pi and 360. Um, here, our pi cancels. So does our radians. Um, I can cancel a 4 out of 180 as well if I want to. I'm going to. And I'm going to get 45. So I take negative 3 times 45, and label it degrees, negative 135 degrees. Radian measure here of an angle of 27 degrees. Again, I'm starting with 27 degrees. So I have to put degrees on the bottom because those I need to cancel. Also, I'm looking for radians. So radians has to go on the top because that's what I'm looking for. Pi radians and 180 degrees go together. They're each half circles. Again, if we wanted to, guys, we could have done 2 pi and 360. That would have worked just fine as well. If it's easier for you to remember the full circle, go for it. Here, I want my degrees to cancel. I'm going to have 27 pi over 180. And I can simplify there by taking out at least a 9. I'm going to have 3 pi over 20. I took a 9 out of here and a 9 over out of there. And I'm left with 3 pi over 20. And again, we label it radians. Now, what is the degree measure of each angle expressed in radians? 
And what is the radian measure of each angle expressed in degrees? Express radian measures in terms of pi. So we don't want to like calculate them out and have a decimal. We want the exact value. So the fraction or the whole number um, and pi. So here we have radians. And again, like I said, um, don't spend too much time remembering like or panicking about thinking you're going to forget if I have radians as the degrees go on top or the bottom um, because we just need them to cancel. So just like it was in science and in Algebra 1 and all throughout conversions, if we have radians and we want them to cancel, they have to go on the bottom. When we have radians, we need to switch to degrees, so those go on the top. It's 180 degrees to a half circle and pi. Again, you can use the full if you want to. Radians cancel. I also have um, 2 and 180 gives me just 90 and pi and pi cancel. So all I have left is 90 degrees. So pi over 2 radians is the same as 90 degrees. 225 degrees. Again, I'm going to multiply by our conversion factor. Since I have degrees, I need degrees to cancel. I'm going to put radians in the numerator. There's pi radians in a half circle and 180 degrees. Um, those are our straight angles, half circles. Degrees cancel. I'm going to have 225 pi over 180. This is going to give me 5 pi over 4 radians. If you're not sure what that simplifies down to, guys, um, break it down one thing at a time. Uh, I took a 4 out, um, I mean, sorry, I took a 5 out, and I just kept going until I got to where I needed to be. The other thing that you can do here is um, you can type it in your calculator as 225 fraction 180. Don't put the pi in there um, just to get the fraction part. The pi here is a little bit like a label. Okay, it's a constant label. And there we go. We have 5 over 4 pi radians, or 5 pi over 4. 2 radians times, we need radians to cancel, looking for degrees. 180 degrees over pi radians, radians cancel, and I have 360 over pi degrees. Um, here it's going to be approximately, uh, if we type that in, 360 divided by pi, we get 114.56. And that's more helpful than saying 360 divided by pi. Okay, um, and we had to keep the pi there because we were missing one here. 150 degrees. We're going two radians, so radians has to be on top, and we need degrees to cancel, so it goes in the denominator. Okay, we can either do a 360 or 180, and 180 goes with pi, 360 goes with 2 pi. So half circles here. Uh, simplify what you can. Degrees cancel. Um, I can take a 30 out of each of those, and I have 5 over 6, so I have 5 pi over 6 radians. Example 2 is finding cosine and sine of radians. What are the exact values here of cosine of pi over 4 radians and sine of pi over 4 radians? So uh, when we do this, each pi is half of a circle. So right now we have 1 pi divided by 4, which means we're going to take just this top circle because that's pi, and we're going to divide it in 4. And my circle's not even, but we're going to go base off my, I'm going to try that, off my graph. So if we divide it into 4, I'm going to have 1 section, 2 section, 3 sections, 4 sections. We want just pi over 4. We want one of those sections. We want one-fourth of a pi. So we're looking for right here, this angle right here. Okay, we're going to take a full pi, divide it by 4, and we only want one of them. 
so this angle right here now that's split right in half and we know that when they're equal split it right in half okay um, it's going to be square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 hypotenuse is 1 so uh, and that's again because it's an equilateral triangle our side lengths are the same they're both square root of 2 over 2 when our radius is a 1 on a unit circle um, so cosine of pi over 4 radians and again um, we're not going to have to write out the radians every time if we see a pi over 4 and it's not labeled degrees we just know it's radians um, but here cosine is our x value and sine of pi over 4 radians is our y value which happens to be the same and we're going to leave them as square root of 2 over 2 we're not going to take it to like 0 0.707 or anything like that we're going to leave it as square root of 2 over 2 exact values of cosine of 7 pi over 6 and sine of 7 pi over 6 so again I wonder if this might look okay oh hey now we're in business um, okay so uh, 7 pi over 6 that means we're going to split our pi our radians one radian one pi each half into six pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and do that by splitting each one of these into three and drawing all the way through oops Okay, and when I did that, guys, um, I split each pie into six pieces, so I did each half into three. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. For my first pie, now my second one, I have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Each half has six pieces. I divided it into six because my denominator is a six. Now I'm going to go all the way to... 7 pi over 6, which is right here. Okay. Um, this is a 30, 60, 90. So our hypotenuse is 1, this is a half, and this is square root of 3 over 2. And that's from yesterday. It's always uh, the shorter leg on a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle is always a half. The longer one is always square root of 3 over 2. Um, and this is times our radius, but our radius here is just 1. So square root of 3 times our shorter leg. And because we're in the third quadrant, our point is actually going to be our x is negative square root of 3 over 2. And our y is negative one half because we're in the third quadrant they're both negative so cosine 7 pi over 6 and again we don't have to put the radians if it's not labeled degrees we know it's radians cosine is our x so it's negative square root of 3 over 2 and sine is our y and it's negative one half I'm gonna stop this video here and start on the next one